Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have something of a mega video because we are almost on our way out of 2020. And I thought what better way to celebrate than analyzing the top 20 best devil fruits within the series. And I'm sure that each and every one of you has a much better and more fun way of celebrating, but this is mine and it's been a bit of an interesting ride to put together. So long time viewers of the channel will know that this is not my first best devil fruit list. In fact, I've made two in the past, but there is a pretty huge difference between those videos and this one. Namely that my previous lists were more or less based on personal opinion, whereas with this one, I've tried to take a more scientific approach towards determining the quote unquote best devil fruits in One Piece. So here's what I did. I sat down, created a series of ranking criteria and assigned every named devil fruit in the series a score out of 10 for each category. Those scores were then added up, converted into a number out of 100 and the 20 devil fruits who scored the highest are the ones that we will be showcasing here today. And just so that you understand the scope of this undertaking, there are currently about 133 canon devil fruits in One Piece Piece, and I went through each and every one of them. So I've spent a lot of time analyzing entirely fictional fruit. So please do justify my life choices by hitting the subscribe button for the Grand Line View, which will also grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And like any good middle school science assignment, I am going to go through my methodology before we begin. Now, if you don't care about such things and just want to start the countdown, then please do feel free to skip to this time, but I would encourage you to stay because there may be some surprises on this list. And if you don't understand the criteria, well, that could get tricksy for your brain. And for those of you who really don't care, please do stay anyway, and I'll have this slideshow of suggestive Nami images to keep your attention playing in the corner while the rest of us look at some science. But basically, each devil fruit was ranked by the following four categories, the first of which is power. And this is the typical way in which most fans will analyze devil fruits. This category is about pure raw combat and just how strong a fruit's abilities can make you. Now, the next section is utility, and this is all about how beneficial a devil fruit can be for use in daily life. Because the thing we often get wrong when looking at the best devil fruits is automatically assuming the best means most powerful. It doesn't, and fruit that can completely change your day-to-day -day life are also well worthy of consideration when we're talking about the best, so that has its own category. And the third section is potential, which mainly exists to balance out the fruits in the series that were possessed by terrible wielders. So fruits with great potential power that we have no demonstrated evidence of. Because you know it's not the fruit's fault that they weren't used well, but this category also goes on to favor devil fruits that have demonstrated uses beyond their initial power granting. Like say the Gomu Gomu no Mi is a fruit that would do really well in the potential category because it has demonstrable evolution. And finally, we have my favorite category, which is detriments. This final section is designed to account for fruits that actively curse their users more than usual. Devil fruits that come with innate negative qualities that users need to overcome. So a high score in the detriment category means that a fruit has very few negative outcomes, whilst a low score in this category means that a fruit has major negative impacts on your lifestyle. And to be honest, this last category won't be too too important for this list, it will be focused on a hell of a lot more in the worst devil fruit list, but I feel like it is important to account for because detriments almost never get taken into consideration. And so basically every fruit then gets assigned a score out of 10 for these four categories. Those are added up to a number out of 40, and then I converted that directly into a score out of 100 because that's a much nicer number to deal with and gives you a better overall impression. I mean, for example, saying that a fruit scored 90 out of 100 gives you a much better impression than saying, say 36 out of 40, which is stupid. And just as a bit of an intro example of how the system works, one fruit you will not see on this list is the Gura Gura no Mi. And you might initially think that's a bit absurd because it is the strongest Paramecia in existence. And you're right, so it satisfies one of our four categories. Meanwhile, its scores were not so great in the others, especially utility, because other than mass destruction, there's not a lot of day-to-day -day use with it, and it gets saddled with detriments, such as being difficult to control and causing friendly damage. And in this case, it achieved a total score of 73.75 out of 100, and I did find at least 20 fruits who outdid it. More actually. But with that example out of the way, let us get into our top 20 results, commencing with, rather predictably, number 20, which will be the Horror Horror no Mi. So we are starting this list off with a very high mark because this fruit is far above average and a good all-rounder. In combat, it gets slapped with a solid nine, if just for the fact that it will make 99% of opponents immediately incapacitated and surrender. And if they don't, well, we have explosive ghosts to chuck at them for days, none of which can be impacted by any attack or defense in this world. In fact, at this moment, we don't even know if Haki affects these ghosts, which is pretty wild and insanely powerful. The utility category is also pretty damn crazy, as summoning an army of ghosts to do your bidding is a fine way to spend life. And indeed, a post time skip Perona can even levitate. And yes, this is Perona, it's not an astral projection, although this fruit also lets you do that. The fruit really only loses points for not having a truly infinite amount of utility, and its potential is limited, given that it mostly involves features that exist on a different 
different plane. And the only detriment I could really think of is that the user does have to leave their body vulnerable to access astral projection, but that's all. Otherwise, this is a great and incredible fruit to begin with. Now, moving on to number 19, I'm going to say right here and now that Zoan fruits don't feature too heavily on this list, but one of the rare examples of a fruit that is simply too good to ignore is the Hito Hitonomi model Daibutsu. Because mythical Zoans are always something to take notice of, especially when they come with an innate shockwave ability that rivals attacks performed by the strongest Paramecia fruit. And becoming a big old Buddha does come with some nice utility, because transforming into a giant allows you to do all sorts of things that a regular Afro-clad human simply could not. However, I do think that being a giant hits a ceiling fairly soon. It does also have a higher score in potential because we've really only caught the briefest of glimpses of this thing's full power, and it may very well come with an aspect of mental enlightenment, being a Buddha and all. And as for detriments, well, turning into a giant is actually a pretty big detriment because it's much harder to control your movement. In a society that is unapologetically designed for regular humans, and you would need to be very, very careful when you transform. I mean, for example, if you were to transform on a particular size ship, then the weight of the Golden Buddha might even sink it, so stuff like that is a consideration. But it's still a pretty great fruit, as is number 18, which will be the Magu Magu no Mi. And this is probably a good time to mention that fruits were sometimes tied in terms of overall score, and in that case, the tie had to be broken simply by my personal opinion. Which is why in this case, the Magu Magu ranks higher than Sengoku's Hito Hito no Mi Moldo Daibutsu. But here we have the fabled devil fruit with the highest offensive power, so it gets a perfect 10 there quite easily. Utility and potential both have an eight, and most of that comes from the fact that it is simply a Logia fruit. In terms of elemental creation, Logia have a demonstrated ability to create more or less whatever they want out of their elements, which is pretty damn useful to say the least. But in this case, the Magu Magu does lose points because magma is a destructive element, which thus limits its utility and potential more than a friendly element would. Like for example, I'd rather live in a castle made of ice than a castle made of raging hot magma. And being a destructive element is also why it lost points for the detriment category. This fruit is a massive, massive liability to everyone and everything around you. You would need to be so damn careful anytime you activate these powers because one stray drop of magma can do untold harm. But with that said, still an undeniably great fruit. However, not the best. And a better fruit can be found in number 17, perhaps, with the Pera Pera no Mi, because this is a shockingly underrated fruit, and it mostly comes from the categories of utility and potential, which give the Pera Pera no Mi a perfect 10 out of 10 each. And this is because, as a generation-style Paramecia, with a very friendly substance being candy, a user of this fruit can make quite literally anything. And yes, that something needs to be made out of candy, but it can be as ornate or as mechanically sound as you need it to be. I mean, we've even seen a grand candy escalator conjured in the series. So the utility and potential of the Parapara no Mi is effectively infinite. Where this fruit does lose points is definitely power. Yes, it's quite strong, but only as much as the candy itself, or with an experienced user, only as strong as the Haki imbued into the candy. It's not a fruit that grants you godlike levels of raw power on its own. And as for detriments, well, candy can be a pretty tricky thing because obviously it's not hugely viable to use in any hot climates. At best, it gets all sticky and annoying, and at worst, it melts, making you constantly recreate all of the cool things that you've made. And just as a side note, let's hope that the uh, the tongue of Perispero is not part of the Perispero no Mi, because it very well might be. Now, moving to number 16, we have the Ri Ri no Mi model Pteranodon. And I have to say, this one really surprised surprised me. If I was to make a list entirely based on unstructured opinion, I don't think I would even come close to considering this for the top 20. But under the criteria I set out, this one blew away all expectations. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that this fruit grants its user natural flight, which with utility, any fruit that grants natural flight was immediately given at least a score of nine, because flight is one of those truly life-changing abilities. Do not underestimate how amazing and how useful it is. But as an ancient Zoan, we're also very much at the top of the pecking order when it comes to power in terms of raw physical strength gained anyway, because there's a very simple strength hierarchy in this class being basic Zoan, carnivorous Zoan, and then ancient Zoan being the strongest. Although above those are mythical Zoans, but they tend to be more magic and ability-based rather than strength-based. This fruit also scores pretty highly for detriments because there really aren't that many, other than drawing a lot of attention to yourself for, you know, being a flying dinosaur. But I have to say, I also can't see a huge amount of potential in it either. I mean, yes, you can potentially awaken the fruit, but I really don't know how much further we can push 
push it beyond what we've seen. However, what we've seen is still pretty damn cool. Just like number 15, which is the Zushi Zushi no Mi. Another fruit now that I think can be quite underrated because being able to control gravity is absolute insanity and is an easy 10 for power. Because I maintain that if you give two people of equal skill the choice between gravity and magma and ask them to fight, the one with the gravity power is almost certainly going to win. This fruit also has a fun non-combative use in that it allows its user to float and transport themselves by lowering gravity. It's a bit of a convoluted method of travel, but it is definitely there. The potential is also pretty sky high because gravity is a core governing principle of existence. So being able to manipulate it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. It is very tricky to handle though. And like the Magu Magu, it comes with a high chance of collateral damage. Once again, you need to be incredibly careful when activating this fruit's powers and that leads to its detriment score. And all of that stuff smushed together overall lands the fruit at number 15. But as for number 14, we now have the Auto Autonomy. And this one might be a bit of a surprise, but stay with me. This fruit does not achieve a perfect score in any single era, but it comes pretty damn close in all of them. And I think this fruit gets heavily underrated mainly because of its user, Jola, but the seemingly arbitrary ability to turn anyone or anything into modern art is phenomenal. If we're looking at power, this is a one shot victory. If you get hit by this ability, you're done. And the only way you have any chance whatsoever is if the user did something so incredibly dumb, like getting tricked by a panty obsessed skeleton. That is the one and only true counter to this fruit. But this is one of those rare fruit powers that will even one shot an Emperor of the Sea if the ability lands. But transforming those things into art comes with a huge range of utility and potential as well, because you can now control those things and use them to do effectively whatever you want. And furthermore, this fruit has almost no detriments. The only thing I can think of is that it does have a slightly annoying activation requirement, which involves throwing bubbles. And I guess if you don't like modern art, then that might be a bit of a detriment for you maybe. And that's a shame, but otherwise this fruit is criminally amazing. And now for number 13, we have the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix. Scoring the exact same as the Art of no Mi, we now have our second Zoan fruit, also a mythical brand. And let's address this first up. The only thing that really holds this fruit back is the power category. Due to the blue flames of the Phoenix holding healing properties, they do not deal any damage whatsoever to your standard combatant. And really the only thing that can are the Phoenix talents. And look, that isn't much. I mean, yes, you can increase the force of your own attack, but that depends more on the base power of the user without the fruit. So that's why it lands at a five. Meanwhile, every other category is truly enviable. With utility, once again, the amazing benefit of flight easily carries the score to a nine and then add all of the healing stuff on top of that and you cannot deny it a 10. And as a mythical flying magical creature, it also has a solid 10 for potential. And as for detriments, yeah, look, one point was taken away because it does require you to really rethink and restructure how you fight. Because not only are you a bird now, you're a bird whose body can't deal damage. So consuming this fruit is not a straightforward deal, but at the same time, I think you can work with it. Now, moving on to number 12, we have the Giro Giro no Mi, which is quite possibly the most overpowered forgotten about devil fruit in the series. And since you have probably forgotten about it, just a reminder that this fruit allows its user to see through everything, whether it be layers of physical matter or even deeper concepts like being able to selectively read minds. And to me, that ability is already enough for a 10 in utility because no, you're not going to be able to create stuff like other fruits, but being able to read minds is a supreme ability that would initially activate God mode in your life. And it also gives you limitless potential. And that's just the mind reading aspect. But this fruit delivers on potential even more than that, because apparently the user of this fruit can also monitor all directions within a 4,000 kilometer radius. And to put this insanity into some sort of perspective, if you were to travel coast to coast across the United States, then that distance would be just under 5,000 kilometers. So the Gira Gira no Mi would give you the power to see essentially anyone, anywhere, anytime within essentially any country in the world that you just so happen to be in. So now the user of this fruit is effectively all seeing and all knowing, but can we have a third thing? Well, we sort of can because have I mentioned whales? Apparently the Gira Gira no Mi allows its user to create gigantic whale creatures out of tears, which are about as hot as smelting iron. Why does the fruit do this? I don't know, because it really doesn't fit quite into the theme of the other two powers, but really any one of these abilities would be amazing and to have all three within one fruit is a mess, a shockingly powerful mess, mind you, which is why the Gira Gira no Mi finds itself at number 12. As for number 11, we have the Mira Mira no Mi. Mira, Mira on the wall, who is the worst Charlotte sibling of all? I mean, it's flampe, obviously. Brule is amazing. And so is this fruit because I have one word for you, pocket dimension, which is actually two words, but I don't care. I really cannot think of many things more useful and more full of potential than a seemingly infinitely expanding pocket dimension that gives you easy access to quite possibly anywhere in the world you'd like to go, so long as there is a mirror. Storage, transport, defense, you name me a thing and this pocket dimension is almost certainly going to assist 
against you. And that's not even the end of it though, because at least seemingly one conjured mirror acts as a perfect defense capable of reflecting any attack back at an opponent. It's sort of like the Bari Bari no Mi, but better. Although the mirror itself is much smaller than Bartolomeo's barriers, but still it is better. Plus the user can transform themselves into mirror images of targets and then go on to force those targets to imitate the actions of the user due to the logic of mirrors, I guess. Now I will say where this fruit loses points is power because the only true power it grants is dependent on the opponent of the user. So that could be quite a lot and it could also be quite nothing. And it also does take a two point detriment just due to the fact that it does require a massive series of mirrors, many of whom seem to be sentient as well, by the way, to make the most of the mirror world feature. Easily broken mirrors as well, which is a problem. But still this fruit is ludicrous and easily one of the best powers that this series has ever showcased. But moving into the top 10 now, we will start with the Ope Ope no Mi. And now we have one of the most broken fruits in all of One Piece. The Ope Ope no Mi is so powerful that Oda really needs to dumb down his writing and just sort of pretend it doesn't exist a lot of the time. The user of this fruit can effectively play God with anyone or anything caught within a room. Cut them up, swap their bodies, remove people's hearts in mini rooms and teleport things. You can do basically whatever you want. And that's why we have a perfect 10 for power and shockingly high scores for utility and potential because when you're given the powers of God, that turns out to be pretty useful. What definitely holds the Ope Ope no Mi back is the cost of its use. Firstly, one does need to create a room which puts a limit on the power. And yes, you can extend that room to quite an amazing range, but after a while that will come at the cost of stamina and even potentially life force. And as a further detriment, if you did want to use the crowning ability of the Ope Ope no Mi, being the perpetual youth surgery, well, that will cost your life. So that's a pretty big detriment to me. Still, the rest of the fruit's costs are almost certainly worth the rewards. Moving to number nine now, we have the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi. Now in very simplistic terms, this fruit gives its user the ability to push things. Push things with plush new poor pads that become permanently affixed to the hands of the user. And this is so much better than it sounds. Much like Brule's mirror defense, the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi is able to counter any attack the user is presented with. And on top of that, it's also capable of generating its own attacks by pushing and condensing air to the point where it becomes a series of increasingly devastating shockwaves. As for utility and potential, this fruit can either send you or a thing or a person of your choice anywhere in the world. You just get pushed and then three days later, you're there, which can also be invoked as a sort of short range teleport style effect. But the really weird and kind of mind boggling thing is that this fruit can even push away intangible concepts such as pain, thus resulting in the instant healing of all pain and fatigue. The only real detriment to this fruit is how very hand based it is and the user needs to be very on top of their game. And I suppose growing paw pads may also mildly impact your lifestyle, maybe, but that's it. Otherwise we have yet another ridiculous fruto. And they will only get more ridiculous as we step into number eight, which is the Gasu Gasu no Mi. And now we have our second Logia type fruit to appear on this list, which gives the user the ability to conjure, manipulate and become gas. What kind of gas you ask? Well, I guess any kind of gas. This fruit is everything that the Moku Moku no Mi wishes it was. Whilst not being given a super great score for power, the ability to remove all oxygen from any given area is quite notable and will result in an easy victory on 99.9% .9 of occasions. Not to mention all of the other ways to wield gas in combat and your innate Logia state. But given that gas is such a general substance, this is very much like the gravity argument again, because being able to manipulate such a fixture of existence holds so much potential. And as such, it's almost a shame to see it being used as a weapon by the crazy Caesar clown. Becoming gas also allows you to fly through a propulsion system, which as we know is an easy nine for utility. There aren't that many powers that can change your day-to-day -day life more than flight. And your detriments are quite minimal. Just be careful not to suffocate or explode those close to you and bam, you've got yourself one fine fruit. Perhaps not quite as fine as number seven though, the Ito Ito no Mi, because this fruit is ridiculous. The ability to create and manipulate strings has been seriously abused in One Piece. As with most generation style paramecias, the Ito Ito no Mi was given a magnificent score for utility and potential because as demonstrated by Doflamingo, you can essentially craft anything. Living puppets, giant bird cages, entire string clones that come complete with realistic coloring somehow, and even temporary internal organs. Add the idea that these strings are both incredibly sharp and nigh on unbreakable, and that gives us a solid score for power as well. The only thing that even mildly lets down the team here is the detriment area, because this fruit can't just be used by anyone. It takes a pretty sharp-minded individual to make the best use of the Ito Ito no Mi, and given how crazy powerful these strings are, there is also a huge chance of unintentional damage or even death caused by whimsical activation. So, you know, just, just be careful with this one. Stepping into number six though, we have the Soru Soru no Mi. The ability to manipulate the souls of others as well as yourself is a terrifying one indeed. And while it does only work under the condition of fearing the user, it is still an instant win in most situations, gaining a 
10 for power. Now, as for utility, well, that's where the homies come in. This fruit allows one to fracture souls and place them into objects to create a Disney-like army of minions. Basically meaning that upon consumption, you are instantly crowned the king or queen of your own empire. The potential, however, is limited by the fear factor and the strict manipulation of soul matter. In many ways, this doesn't quite have as much potential as generating and manipulating any other reality-based substance. So apart from a potential awakening, I think we've seen the pinnacle of what we can do here. And the fear factor is also why it gets half a point taken away as a detriment as well. There's not a whole lot more to say though, just another ungodly dominant fruit in all categories. To number five now, we have the Pika Pika no Mi, and I ask you, have you ever been kicked at the speed of light? Probably not. And by the way, neither has anybody else in One Piece because such a thing would trigger a nuclear style explosion. Nobody cares about science though, because this low gear fruit just says, F everything, I am amazing. And I think it's safe to say that this is the fastest fruit ability in existence, completely revolutionizing travel, albeit in a very annoying way, because as light, the user can only move in a straight line and must depend on reflection or refraction in order to change direction, which by the way, is the main reason why it scores a 7.5 in detriment. The straight line restriction sucks so much more than most people are willing to admit. But weirdly enough, the user can also craft objects out of light, which is an easy nine for utility. And while being struck at light speed, even the One Piece world equivalent of light speed is an undeniable 10 for power. It's a really, really great fruit, one of the best, but certainly not the best. And to continue finding that, we now land at number four, the Here Here no Mi, our second Admiral Logia in a row. And I can already hear the complaints of how low the Magamaga no Mi was ranked compared to these two. Aka Inu defeated Aokiji, they'll say, and that's nice. I don't really care though, because the Here Here no Mi is far better in every other area that is not combat, which is many. As a non-destructive element, ice contains infinitely more potential and utility in terms of crafting whatever the user wants, so much so that we really have not seen the full extent of what Kuzan can do, because no single individual is creative enough to harness the full potential of such an ability. And unlike the collateral damage of the Magamaganomi and painful travel restriction of the Pika Pika no Mi, the Hia Hia no Mi really has no detriments. Just be careful not to freeze people, I guess. And if you do, then immediately unfreeze them because they don't die. Like they almost certainly would after being accidentally struck by magma. But the Hia Hia no Mi is a super cool Logia and yes, the pun is intended. So climbing up to number three now, we have the Mochi Mochi no Mi. And heading back into Paramecia land, we find ourselves with one of the most unique fruits in the series. The Mochi Mochi no Mi, which is actually a special Paramecia. And that's because it combines the powers of two standard Paramecias, allowing its user to both generate Mochi and transform their body into Mochi. Which despite popular thought is not what any other generation style Paramecias can do. Not Galdino, not Magellan, not anyone except Katakuri. Which is why this fruit scores so highly in utility and potential, because it can do anything a generation style Paramecia can do, anything and more. It doesn't get a perfect score in power though, because Mochi isn't the greatest of things to have command over. It's more Katakuri that makes it look so fearsome. And it also loses a lot of its potency when exposed to liquid, which negates the stickiness and overall usefulness of the fruit. Definitely an amazing Paramecia though. However, the true king of the Paramecia empire can be found in number two, which is the Hobby Hobby no Mi. This fruit is like a greatest hits album of everything we've already explored on this list. Firstly, it will instantly defeat any opponent with a mere touch. And as such, this is another one of those powers that will topple an emperor immediately. So an easy 10 for power. However, the mechanism of defeat is by turning the opponent into a toy, which allows the user to build a toy army to do their bidding, much like the homies of the Sora Sora no Mi. So that's an instant empire and an instant 10 for utility. Oh, and as a side effect, immediately after consuming the fruit, you are granted perpetual youth. You know, the ultimate ability of the Ope Ope no Mi and the reason why it is valued at a price tag of 5 billion berries. After reading the Hobby Hobby no Mi, you just become frozen in time and partially immortal for no adequately explained reason. And this fruit also scores very highly with potential given that it was in the hands of a less than great user with sugar. And imagining the Hobby Hobby no Mi with a more competent figure is like an instant world domination scenario. And the only cause for detriment is the activation. The user has to touch its target. And in certain cases that might be difficult, but not most of them. Especially if you happen to be an unsuspecting little girl, or just unsuspecting in general. There really aren't that many people who are going to see an attack like this coming unless they have future side of course. But currently that's like two people in one piece and there's no guarantee that either of them would use it. So it is truly one of the best devil fruits in the series, right alongside our ultimate number one, which is the Goro Goro no Mi, which rather notably ended up with the exact same total score as the Hobby Hobby no Mi. And I think you can definitely make the argument to swap their places, but I went with the ability to conjure, manipulate, and even become lightning because it is simply the most maddening fruit we've ever seen in every respect. You just can't watch someone as relatively incompetent as Anel wield this thing and not give it a perfect 10 for power. You eat the fruit and become an instant thunder god with no limitations or detriment 
instruments for using that power. Now with utility, unlike the Niki Niki no Mi, this fruit does allow the user to teleport and unlike the Pika Pika no Mi, the user can do so in any direction they see fit. Lightning may not be as fast as light itself, but it is actually pretty damn close and at least the user has directional control. Once again, the potential is high because NL was not, you know, the greatest of fruit users, but even what he was able to access and conjure showed an extensive range of fun and destructive things and to cap it all off, it really has no detriment. It has seemingly no cost for using any of its godlike powers and really all you need to do is watch out for collateral damage and men made of rubber, but that's about it. So welcome to the pinnacle of fruity goodness in One Piece and alongside the Hobby Hobby no Mi, the fruit that I consider to be the blanket best in the series. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.